<laughs> yeah, we're gonna attend Miriam Namazi's. Um, oh, good. Uh, uh, at 12:30 when she has a keynote speech. Right, 12:30. Why, why, why don't you speak to me though? What do you have to say? Why do you hate Muslims so much, man? I don't hate Muslims. I hate I hate Islam. Why do you hate Islam? Because it's stupid. Why is it stupid? <laughs> Is it stupid? It's really yes. stupid. I, I think we have a lot of good reasons to believe the intellectual foundation of Islam is very, very strong. No, they're not. <laughs> okay, why? Why they're not? It, it relies on th this prophet of yours. Okay, what's wrong with our prophet? How does he know? How does he where's, know? Where's Did the evidence? Exist? Okay, let, 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 and, you know, I, I, let, let me give you some evidence. Should I, I read this evidence? book last night. How do you find it? Terrible. Okay. This is disgraceful. Give me some you clearly You clearly have some money here because you can put, put up these nicely printed booklets. But this you have money, you have a very nice suit on. <laughs> well, yeah, so I'm, what I'm saying is you've got, sure. you've got some money, you've yep. got, you're investing money in this, and then you've got this crap. This is, this is rehash creationist nonsense. This is the same stuff we've been dealing with in the United States for the last 50 years. Okay. And there's absolutely nothing in here that's original. Okay. And all of it's been frequently refuted. So, the, but what we just made are statements and generalizations. You haven't given any substance here. What do you mean? I mean, do you disagree that, for example, when we talk for about... Instance, well, the, you make the first cause argument. No, we don't actually. It's, called, it's actually called the Kalam cosmological argument. It's a rehashed version. It's a modern version that has yes. good premises and that... No, and no, if you no, study we, logic, we, 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 no, there's no... Okay, come on, no, okay let me give it to you very sum in summary, right? Okay, give me the summary. There's two premises, yeah. Whatever begins to exist as a cause. The second premise is the universe began to exist, okay? And we, we could substantiate that philosophically and using astrophysics. Then the conclusion, no, which makes it a sound of argument, is that then the universe has a cause. So if the universe no. began to exist, it has a cause. So let me just repeat that. Okay. One, whatever begins no, to exist I, has I a heard cause, you. the universe let, began let me, to exist, me, therefore the universe has a cause. Let me point it doesn't out, mean it's God, though. I will point but we use conceptual right. analysis I will, to... That's where I will point out two things okay, there. Good. And, is, and one is that modern physics does not su su support your claims. Okay. That you can have spontaneous things just popping into existence, they do all the time. Okay, can, can, I, can I address that? And, is that well, right? first, and let me make my other point, okay. which is um, that, as you mentioned, pointing out that there was a cause does not imply a God. I agree, I agree. So, why do we care? You didn't, you didn't let me finish. Okay, now you're going to finish, okay. Okay, good. So, the first thing, in terms of random quantum fluctuations and subatomic events that don't correspond to causality, well, that's a particular view amongst physicists, which is an indeterministic view. We don't have to hold that view. You know, the, the mathematics is there, but there could be different translations in the real world. So, for instance, you could take a deterministic view, which is the David Bowie interpretation, for instance, right? And there's other physicists who are taking that view. So you can't just say it's all of physics. And I think that's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a scientific outdated cliche. But argue, then what yeah? you're doing is you're, you're admitting that you're basically cherry-picking cherry the... No, we're not. Because well, yes, you are. You just said that. No, be, no. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you why. Because if you take a Kantian argument that causality is a priori, oh. it's independent from experience. Because we only know that we could order our perceptions in the universe based upon the innate concept of causality. So to accept that there's no causality in the quantum fluctuations would be denying your own very perceptions in the first place. So we have good reasons to believe that no, there is co there's causality here and, and fl quantum fluctuations don't say much. The, and the other point I'm trying to make is when we know there's a cause for the universe, which you, you're happily assuming that there may be a cause, the problem is, is that now when you use conceptual analysis, you come to some start, start, starting conclusions. For example, we would argue that Occam's razor must be uncaused. We would argue that therefore it must be eternal. We would argue that it's immaterial and transcendent because it creates the material world. So from these perspectives, it's in line with the monotheistic view of God. Uh, I don't see that as a problem. I see that as a huge problem Why? because what you've got is an anthropomorphic patriarchal god. No, no we haven't oh, yes, said anything about oh, anthropomorphism. Oh, yes, that? you have. That's a Christian narrative. This is the Islamic narrative too. No, in the Quran, all, in the Quran all, it says Laysa kemithli shay, which means God is transcendent. There is nothing like unto Him, and when we even we say Him is no gender. So what? But do you see how some of your outdated cliches you've you got, can't apply them to the you've Quran? You've got a personal God who takes a personal interest in human beings. Okay, what's wrong with that? You have no evidence for this. The we universe... Can I give you an evidence for, for God having a will? Uh, no, okay, no, no, an no, eternal no. being bringing to existence a finite effect must have chosen it to come to existence. Choice indicates a will, and a will indicates it can have a relationship with personal beings. Do you see? Where's the evidence? Yeah. Conceptually, so conceptual. Oh, conceptual. <laughs> okay, okay. But, but do you see? Do you, okay, well, but do you, you know why that's I, not funny? I think funny? everybody here can see what you're Is doing. Is it doctor or professor? Everybody here can see what you're doing. Professor Myers, you know why that's funny? Because you're assuming that you must have an empirical paradigm to everything that you say, a verificationism. It's like logical positivism of the 1960s. It doesn't work anymore. I'll give you an example because empiricism can't even prove logical truths like numbers. 
Numbers are conceptual, so? they're necessary truths. Science so is we not can't about laugh proof. that there's no physical evidence for numbers. Do you see the point? Do you, do so, you understand the point here? I, I wonder if I can get in a few words Yeah, sure, here. go for it. Sorry. <laughs> We'll see how far I get. I think everybody here can see exactly what you're doing. Yeah, fine. So what I what I do is mention something, and you immediately interrupt, and you give me this. No, I want to address it. That's what's going <laughs> I want to address it. Like, case yeah. case yeah. proven. Case proven. Yes. Go okay, go go for it. <laughs> and then you, you immediately interrupt, and you throw out this long series of philosophical baffle gap, which is completely irrelevant to your premise. I don't care about this philosophy. Okay. Philosophy is a useful tool for generating good questions but then science is what answers them. Science does not meddle in proofs. So when you keep talking about proofs, you're just, you're just going right on my head. I don't care, the proofs don't matter. What matters is, do we have empirical evidence for anything that you're talking about? And we do not. And in fact, we have empirical evidence that defies these interpretations that you're throwing at us. Can I adjust that? Why, sure. Thank you. Um, first and foremost, don't you think it's an unhealthy way intellectually to always require empirical evidence to form conclusions about things. Because that would go back to logical positivism. It's very crude. Wouldn't you agree? No, I would not agree. Okay, why not? Because you need the empirical evidence in order to confirm your interpretations of the world. That what we do in science is that you make preliminary hypotheses, which are, of course are conceptual, Sure. but then you rely on the fact that you have have to generate empirical evidence about the world around you in order to test them. When you talk constantly about this conceptual stuff, this philosophical stuff, what you're doing is charging off without anything to ground your conclusions. Okay, because that's this, I think there's a hidden assumption that the only way you should ground conclusions are empirically. And I agree there's a value for no, empiricism. No, 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 that's not true. But I would argue that there's some logical truths, for instance, that are necessary before you even have empiricism, do you see? This is why when there was a the big rationalist debate, the rationalists were the person that they bridged this, <laughs> mathematics was the battleground, wasn't it? And this is why you have the, some empiricists are rationalists for mathematics, but when it comes to the world, the empiricists, that, that's, that's how they reconciled it. There was a philosophical contradiction there. So it's a useful way of having this discussion, but I think there is that, I think crude view of that empiricism is the only way formed to form conclusions about our life. That, no, 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 no. It, this isn't about absolutes. This is not about, I'm, not that I'm saying that there's only one true way to interpret the world. Sure. What this is, is saying that the one reliable method we have requires confirmation from empiricism. Okay. You have not demonstrated another reliable method because there are lots of people who believe in different religious views. They're all sitting there making exactly the same kinds of arguments you do. The Christians make the very same arguments you do. Yes, they do, of course. Yes. Some Christians, not all. Most Some of them. just have faith or just Whatever. Believe, whatever. But, the, but the point is that you are both using the same methods and you are arriving at completely different conclusions. Yeah, I agree. Can I tell so, you why, we, why I agree with you? Okay, go ahead. The, the, reason, the reason I agree with you is because See, we've got one aspect of a philosophical justification for the existence of a creator cause, whatever you call it. Now from that, then you have the concept of revelation, the concept of a text that, that is claimed to be from the divine. Now, you know, we would humbly argue that, you know, the Qur'an, which is the book of the Muslims, we would say is a very intrusive text, it's an imposing text, right? But this imposition, we would argue is positive because, frankly, I think it just makes you think. For example, the Qur'an says, أَفَلَا تَعْقِنُونَ Do not use your brains. Yet tafakkirun for goal to reflect, deep reflection. The Arabic word here means to really reflect about the implications of something. But the Quran goes further than this, which is quite weird from a religious book, from a secular perspective. It actually says, if you, you don't believe it's from the divine or from the supernatural, then challenge it. So what we would argue humbly is that there are no naturalistic explanations for certain statements in the Quran. For instance, some statements in the Quran that they mention geology and concept of isostasy, for instance. Concepts of that the mountains have like root-like structures, which we just found out recently. If you go to the book, Earth by Dr. Frank and, Press. Uh, yeah, it, it concludes yeah, yeah. that. So how could a desert Arab who knew nothing about science who was so primitive that for instance they used to believe mountains to keep the sky up would come to such conclusions? We would humbly argue philosophically, we exhaust naturalistic explanations, so it's a signpost to the transcendent. I've, I've, Do you appreciate that? No. I've read these same interpretations. Okay. In particular the, the ones I'm really interested in because I'm a developmental biologist sure. are Keith Moore's nonsense. Total that he talks about you the Quran. You disagree with Keith Moore? Why is that oh, nonsense? Yes. Why is that nonsense? I've read those sections of the Quran. Do, do you agree, disagree the Quran, with the stages of embryology? The Quran, uh, you know, the, yes. the seventh? 
Yes, so so let him say yes, why. Let him the Quran right, right, right. is babbling. It's throwing out these very sure. vague, fuzzy descriptions. Uh, the, you know, of, of the embryo looking like chewed flesh or whatever. Oh, no, no, and, I'm, I'm and not talking about that. I'm talking about that's what I'm talking about. No, no, I'm talking about specific stages of embryology. For example, the bones are formed first. That's what Keith, Dr. Keith Moore was talking about. Yes. Seventh week, and then we have the muscles are yes, we formed have, in the eighth we week. Have, we have a series of very well described, very thoroughly dis, uh, analyzed steps in the development of the embryo. And if you go to any embryology text, they will lay them out for you. Right. You cannot substitute the Koran for that. When you look at what the Koran says about it, it is vague, it is ambiguous. Sure. It's just, it's the kind of stuff that a desert nomad might guess about what's going on. I mean, I would disagree. I mean, you wouldn't be able to guess the formation of the bones in the seventh week yes. straight after. The word yes. is thumma in Arabic, straight after. Immediately. I mean, and see, that's when we do scratch the surface rather than have a superficial understanding, but again, I this, think we'll get it no, better, no, right? No, this is again something where uh, the Koran is basically stealing from Greek embryology. Galen, yeah? Uh, well, I'm talking specifically about Aristotle, who okay. made these observations. Well, Aristotle's embryology, if you study it, I mean, I'm sure you've studied it. Yes. Uh, it, it, he believed that uh, fetus is formed by the mixture of menstrual blood and semen. Correct. Well, the Koran doesn't make any statement uh, like that. Uh, and on top so? of, even, even if we go further to Galen, Galen had uh, no, but many stages of embryology and the Quran doesn't my have point, any of those things. My yeah. point yeah. is that there's very little about embryology in the Quran. Yeah, yeah. What there what there is details are not there, you're right. Yeah, that's the right. details are not and there. And yes. what what details are there yeah. are obviously cribbed from Aristotle. No, yes, not at all. You can't make that link. The reason you can't make that link is because <laughs> you, 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 you would have to assume you would have to assume that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and be upon him, would have known what was right, taken it, and then threw away what was wrong. I no, mean, that, that's a no, big assumption. You, no, you're claiming supernatural. What <laughs> I would what I would <laughs> say see? what I would say is that Muhammad was a man of his times, that he was consulting with scholars at the time. That these were ideas that were current well, and common. Evidence. But there's no empirical or historical, historical evidence, evidence for, that. for that. There isn't. But it's just an assumption. But it's that's a, faith. It's, it's a, no, <laughs> I it's, have faith it's, that the Prophet Muhammad borrowed things from scholars. Yes. That's faith. No, that's, a man that's of faith, a, ladies and gentlemen. That is a reasonable <laughs> assumption. No, how can the, it al be? the alternative is to assume. But the history is counter to that. The history is counter to that. You see, you're, you're, you're saying that Muhammad was some kind of ignoramus living in a cave for, for all of his life? No, what I'm not at all. Was, even if your assumption was true, it would still be incorrect because the scholars of science at the time had no idea. They had absolutely no idea what was going on with the God's son. They thought that mountains were keeping the they were keeping the sky up, for instance. Yeah, and that's not true either. <laughs> exactly. But this one. No, no, that's not true. What you're saying about the scholars of the time. Well, no, it, well, in Arabia, definitely that was the case. No, and, in, and in fact, there were no scholars in Arabia. In his city, there were, there were only 17 people who could read and write. Forget the sciences and and uh, the complicated uh, knowledge of scriptures. There, there were only 17 people in his entire tribe who could read I'm, and write. I'm, I'm just kind of surprised that your argument rests on the fact uh, that, that you're arguing that, the, that Arabs were ignorant nomads who knew nothing at all. Yes, this is, this, this is exactly, this is, this is what we're saying, yes. <laughs> The, 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 there were pe there were people who were killing their daughters. Many Europeans at that time as yes. well. I mean, a lot of people. I like think that. the evidence, the historical evidence, shows that there is much more trade and communication going on than you are giving people credit well, for. Well, you can be ignorant and do trade. I mean, we yes. have people doing trade today who are ignorant. And look at the bankers today, man. <laughs> what well, they've done to us? <laughs> they've kept all our money. <laughs> and with trade comes information. Like I say, when we look at the descriptions of embryology in the Quran, and we look at the descriptions of embryology in Aristotle, sure. They're the same. Well, in what way, sir? Would you like to give us the, the, I don't think the, the, date, the, the discussion of the development of bones, etc.? All these things, the, the, you know, the fairly crude uh, stages that are described in Aristotle. It, it's obvious. You, you may have a point there. I, I'm willing to accept that. What I'm saying is, I'm willing to accept that there may be similarities, not that Quran borrowed from Aristotle. Uh, my contention is that the, the specific stages described in the Quran, how does that um, um, uh, match with what Aristotle said. I mean, those stages are quite peculiar to the Quran. Quran is quite unique in describing those stages because the, stages the bones are formed first and then the muscles and this is, uh, how would a desert nomad know okay, that? Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing at this idea that this is a specific, a specific description of embryology. Yes, bones develop first, then muscles I agree, it's general. Yes. No, no, I agree what with you, it's general. I, uh, this Sam, this, it this is something Myers, that right? you can infer just by, you know, rational thought about embryology. You can also just...